Welcome up! In this episode, we will talk about what is a kleptocracy. Coming up! Hello, I'm Understanding Politics, and in this channel I talk about political theories and debates to students as well as curious and passionate people, just like you. So, if you like my videos, consider subscribing. Explaining what is a kleptocracy is fairly simple, because the etymology of the word largely enlightens the meaning behind it. From the Greek kleptes, which stands for thieves, and kratos, a term meaning power, often used as ending towards identifying regimes, to name a couple of them, democracy and autocracy. So, kleptocracy identifies the rule by thieves, a situation in which real power rests in the hands of a very limited number of people that enrich at the expense of the rest of the citizens of a country. Oftentimes, the state is ruled by a kleptocrat, a chief thief, that buys the support of the elite that helps him in maintaining the position over time. Kleptocracies are not necessarily dictatorships. There are several cases of democracies that have been turned into kleptocracies by a number of elected officials, often presidents, that were subsequently voted out of office as a result of their deeds. If you watch a very good Netflix series of documentaries called Dirty Money, you will see that also Donald Trump, the current president of the United States, at the time of recording, was harshly criticized as a potential kleptocrat, because his questionable past of businessmen did not feel very presidential. Furthermore, if you watch the episode on Jared Kushner, Trump's son-in-law, you'll learn how he is getting richer exploiting the position of his father-in-law in office. Another democracy turned kleptocracy is Italy. In 1992, the country was invested by a big scandal known as Tangentopoli, the city of bribes, when a pool of prosecutors charged virtually all the political class with corruption, in an operation that became known as Mani Pulite, clean hands. The investigation shook the political landscape so much that journalists argued that the state had entered a second republic. One more interesting case is the 1MDB corruption scandal that invested the then Malaysian Prime Minister Najib Razak. He entrusted a fake businessman friend of his son, Jolo, to manage the One Malaysia Development Berhad, the 1MDB, a series of public development projects worth billions of dollars. Except the project was never delivered. Jolo has escaped justice and is now living as a refugee in China. But the 4.5 billion of dollars borrowed by Goldman Sachs are missing. Of course, the family of Najib Razak enormously profited from the scandal, and he was ousted in 2018 elections, substituted by Mahathir Mohamad. Now the government is trying to repay the enormous debt contracted through 1MDB while Najib Razak has been sentenced to 12 years of jail. Of course, the US Department of Justice charged Goldman Sachs for violation of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, and the bank agreed to pay a fine of $2.9 billion. As for authoritarian states, a good example is offered by Equatorial Guinea. Its leader is the longest-serving president of Africa, Teodoro Obiang Nguema. Over the years, he has been widely accused of corruption and abuse of power, whereas his son, Theodorin, is very well known for his crazy expenses in the United States. The Obiang family enriched through the stellar earnings guaranteed by the oil resources of the country. In fact, it is extremely easy to find kleptocrats in countries rich in natural resources. In Central Asia, Kazakhstan and Turkmenistan are very good examples of countries where the serving presidents have enriched themselves for the deals concluded in the energy sector. In particular, the family of the former president of Kazakhstan, Nursultan Nazarbayev, has earned billions of dollars in a 20-year lifespan. To give an idea of the figures involved, according to Forbes Kazakhstan, the middle daughter of the former president, Dinara, and her husband, Timur Kulibayev, are worth $2.9 billion each. Clearly, none of the members of the Nazarbayev family ever accepted to be labeled as corrupt, claiming that their businesses were legitimate. So a kleptocracy is a regime fueled by corruption, 
where elected officials abuse of their position to get richer at the expense of the citizens' own good. As a matter of fact, social scientists agreed on the definition of corruption as a misuse of public power for private gain. In a number of countries, it is becoming increasingly difficult to control corruption, because once in office, kleptocrats abuse their power to remain in place, slowly turning liberal democracies in authoritarian states with a democratic facade. Luckily, there are a number of transnational groups trying to hold officials accountable for their behaviors, including NGOs such as Transparency International and Publish What You Pay, and international groups of investigative journalists, such as the ICIJ. More and more countries worldwide are turning into kleptocracies. The takeaway here is that nowadays is more important than ever for citizens to get interested in politics, to check that politicians are actually doing what they've been elected for. In this way, you will be able to punish them via electoral means, in case they are not delivering what promised. They may rob you, and you won't even notice it. Be always skeptical of your officials. Don't idolize them. Be critical even if you agree with them. Trust reliable investigative journalists. There is a high chance that if there are investigations suggesting that a politician has engaged in questionable behavior, it really happened. It's better for a politician to leave office than for citizens to lose resources. They won't die if they are excluded from political competitions. Rather, the political landscape is healthier when personalities change, and we reach better results whenever individuals are substituted by ideas. Lecture is over, thanks for watching. As always, all the sources will be linked in the references section of this video description. If you like the video, nowadays the US have possibly the strongest legislation to prevent corruption abroad the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act, and in addition to this, the Department of Justice in 2010 started a project called the Kleptocracy Asset Recovery Initiative.